What's up, metal and heavy music fans? It's Flight of Icarus again with MetalTrenches.com, and these are my picks for the best metal albums of August. And hey, if you like to be kept up to date with the best and brightest metal bands and albums from the underground and above, then stick with me by hitting that subscribe button down below. First up, we have Fawn Limbs with Darwin Falls. Darwin Falls is the third full-length album from these purveyors of geometric noise and mathematical chaos, following up Harm Remissions and 2020 Sleeper Vessels. If despite my repeated recommendations you still have not checked out this band, you are sorely missing out. They are a seriously impressive feat of both atmosphere and technicality featuring members of Axiopus and Artificial Brain. The instrumentation is positively battering, with chaotic time signatures sure to twist your head clean off your shoulders. But Darwin Falls also sees the band doubling down on the more experimental and atmospheric elements of their early EPs rather than simply bulldozing full speed ahead. There is a laundry list of guest musicians on this album, all of which are contributing some sort of classic string, wind, or brass instrumentation from electric cello to oboe and trombone. These softer sections are also accompanied with spoken word performances, seemingly performed in a dimly lit black room with wispy cigarette smoke floating all around you. And while these portions may be quieter, they are no less eerie and often even menacing. Much like with the likes of Ulcerate, they are simply the calm before the storm, one that inevitably erupts in abrupt and glorious violence. If you enjoy fusions of math core, math grind, and technical death metal, or also just enjoy vicious music that is outside of the box, do yourself a favor and buy this album. Next up, we have a big one with Ginger and their new album Wallflowers via Napalm Records. <laughs> Ginger are a Ukrainian band that specialize in elements of groove and progressive metal. There are so many great moments on this album, starting with Vortex with its kind of slower, more methodical, gradual build from the loungy singing parts to the ultimately very violent and aggressive conclusion. Then there's Disclosure, putting a smile on my face with that first Ric Flair, woo! The kind of Pisces part two croon of Wallflower. And of course, second single and album closer, Mediator. I love that intro with the little break before go and the resulting hailstorm of blast beats. Stop. Go! But honestly, Copycat may be my favorite song overall. This is just another fantastic rager of a track with some serious D-beat for headbanging alongside more mathcore-inspired riffing, but also with some just full-speed-ahead hardcore power chord progressions to get the blood boiling. I will say that I feel like the clean singing portions as a whole could use a little bit more finesse and direction from a songwriting standpoint on tracks like Colossus and Pearls and Swine, but overall I say that this is packed with great performances from all members, especially Vlad just killing it on the drums as always. Check out my full review for more thoughts and my album tier list for my rankings of their full discography so far. Back to the underground we have Leave with Dead Language. That was the beginning of the end. <laughs> Leave is a New York band with the homie Dan of the Hudson Horror and the Illusory Self on vocals. Dan actually listed Glassjaw and early Norma Jean as an influence, though the vocals are more on the heavy side with both high screams and death metal growls. If you ask me, it's more of a cross between Loathe and Meth in how it fuses the more aggressive elements with its thick atmosphere. <laughs> Definitely some Zayo in there as well, with the band confirming as such when I had them on the podcast. In any case, the more meandering, lofty moments only pick up more in the second half, with these shimmering guitars drawing further comparison to the likes of Deaf Heaven, or even at times The Cure. Especially on Distance and Time, which aside from the combinations of screaming and spoken word, has a haunting, delay-affected guitar that would have been right at home on Disintegration. <laughs> But you know me, I'm all about those 
crusher moments, so my personal favorite track has to be The Serpent's Smile. Especially after the more subdued outro of No Longer Satisfies, the eruptions of distortion that I played at the top are absolutely punishing. This is a great album, and in just 30 minutes is a brisk but deeply rewarding listen that you definitely should not miss. On a somewhat similar note, we have Burn in Hell with Disavowal of the Creator of God via Reason and Rage Records. Burn in Hell is an Australian East Coast five-piece drawing inspiration from hardcore and metal heavyweights such as Harm's Way, Cult Leader, and Converge. Combine that with an in-your-face message and lyrics that cut to the bone and you've got yourself an album that takes no prisoners. The HM2 distortion is absolutely devastating, and when combined with the pummeling blasts and D-beats, this is a pit that I'd be wary to enter during a live performance, because it's gonna be a fucking massacre. <laughs> Other comparisons that come to mind are the likes of Nails, and especially Full of Hell given the constant ambiguity of sound weaving between death metal, grind, and hardcore. Tracks like Bleach, Cathedral, and Dead KK Cop are utterly demolishing in every sense of the word, the latter managing to lay waste in just over a minute in runtime. So yeah, if all that you ask of your music is that it crushes you into a tiny little cube of meat and viscera, Burn in Hell is the band for you. Then we have Fleshbore with Embers Gathering via Inner Strength Records. Fleshbore is an Indianapolis tech death crew, with this being their full-length debut album, despite already coming in strong. The vocals here feel very much like a mix between the guttural brutality of Aborted with bouts of the more syncopated rapid-fire approach of Archspire. Mad props to the vocalist, too, for rocking that Croesus shirt in the press photo. In any case, if you want to hear some of the more fun verbal acrobatics, you'll find plenty of it in the likes of Careless Preacher and the title track. <laughs> And while on first sampling, I was prepared to just pick this one up on simple enjoyment factor alone, the deeper dive brought me to realize the clear worth of these musicians in a technical level as well. From the drumming to the guitars, right down to the work on the bass, there are some really impressive performances to find here. And more importantly, they are woven into consistently engaging songs that were never boring. There's a level of dynamics going on here that I actually find to be pretty rare in most death metal on the more brutal side, but on par with the likes of Cytotoxin and Exocrine. Furthermore, thank Thank the gods that these guys understand that less is more. To no end, I complain with album after album about how much better most of them would be if they tightened things up and just shortened it. Enter Ember's Gathering clocking in at a lean and seriously mean seven tracks over just 33 minutes. The result? A banger, start to finish without an ounce of filler, and I can't wait to hear more. Switching gears, we've got Bone Hunter with Dark Blood Reincarnation System via Hell's Headbangers. <laughs> Bone Hunter is a Finnish band formed in 2011 that we have been covering for a while now, cranking out some seriously high-octane releases over the years in the likes of Sexual Panic, Human Machine, and Children of the Atom. They specialize in a very first-wave take on the black metal formula, deeply fusing in elements of thrash metal, speed metal, and heavy metal a la Venom, as well as more recent acts like Rebel Wizard and Destroyer 666. After a brief introduction, the album kicks straight into high gear with the powerful Iron Maiden-worthy riffs of Black Magic M6. Between the rollicking D-beats, raging torrents of melodious guitars, and vicious black and snarls of the frontman, this is music that should earn nods of approval from Kronos to Dave Murray. And seemingly without taking a breath, we work our way straight into equally impressive and damn catchy anthems like Parasite Eve, Virgin Devil Princess, and Devil Power Soldier. Seriously, those chugging triplets and rumbling bass lines are like time traveling straight back to the fever pitch of the 80s metal scene. The non-musical comparison that Dark Blood Reincarnation System kept bringing to mind during listens was that of a roller coaster ride. You can almost feel the inertia of hitting those sudden turns and loops in every note and beat. Endless hooks, wailing solos, and imposing vocals all make this a must-listen album of the month, as well as perhaps Bone Hunter's best release yet. Back on the death metal side of things, we have Our Place of Worship is Silence with Disavowed and Left Hopeless via Translation Loss Records. <laughs> Thank you.
This is the third full-length album from these miserable purveyors of black and death metal, following up the already impressive The Embodiment of Hate and With Inexorable Suffering. Highly recommended for fans of Malthusian, Sepudus, and Alterage. Song lengths have increased a bit overall with this outing, leading to even more dark labyrinthian compositions with new horrors around every corner. I previously referred to this band as living, breathing depravity, and I think that that description holds true for Disavowed and Left Hopeless. Grizzly, Black and Howls bellow into the distance alongside crunchy, rusty, machine-like riffs that should please those who enjoyed the latest Alterage album or certain material from Portal. The resulting compositions are incredibly grim with nary a ray of light to cut through the pitch black bitterness. <laughs> This latest effort feels like a balance of dynamics of the earlier material with the sheer blunt force and raw aggression of the sophomore effort. And the jarring pace changes and generally disjointed riffs are sure to kick you right in the amygdala on tracks like Covenant of the Fallen. Some of the deeper death growls also recall Ethan McCarthy's work with Primitive Man and Vermin Womb, especially when things slow down for the doomier parts. But like I said, these never last for long, unpredictably transitioning back into maelstroms of blast beats and technical riffing that sounds utterly unholy to its very core. The intro to From the Noisome Pestilence in particular really dropped my jaw the first time around. If you enjoy this one, you should check out the other two as well, as they're a bit of a trilogy. Then filling your black metal needs again with Wolves in the Throne Room and Primordial Arcana via Relapse Records. <laughs> Wolves in the Throne Room are an atmospheric black metal band from Olympia, Washington. Tracks like opener Mountain Magic really capture their perfect mixture of grim black metal with lush atmosphere. I can picture mist-shrouded peaks with folk tales told of hidden sorcery and black magic. It's a sound that harkens back to second wave classics from the likes of Emperor, Satyricon, and Enslaved, as well as more modern bands like Moonsorrow. Primal Chasm Gift of Fire is another standout with its brooding, ominous black metal energy. But if you want my vote for the most stunning track on the album, it goes to Underworld Arcana. That intro of strings, synth, and more traditional percussion is positively spellbinding, conjuring images of Will-o'-the-Wisps beckoning you under their spell into forbidden and unknown territory. The closer, Iastre, is a close second, though, with its ethereal choral synths and sorrowful flutes. And the acoustic instrumentation in places is particularly gorgeous, channeling both Scandinavian and Eastern folk music, and also once more reminding me of hours spent in front of our our old 90s desktop playing real-time strategy games. If you feel like being swept up in foreign landscapes and pagan rituals, Primordial Arcana is the album for you. Next up is Phineas and the fire itself via Solid State Records. <laughs> Recommended for fans of classic metalcore bands like August Burns Red, Kill Switch Engage, and As I Lay Dying, Phineas bring the riffs and sing-along moments in a serious way. I checked these guys out on a whim, having never heard of them before, and I ended up dropping the other stuff I was doing to listen to the whole thing. It's another one of those bands that, especially if you, like me, went through high school during the golden era of metalcore, Phineas are going to strike that same nerve. And appropriately so, because they've actually been around for a little while, they just don't get the same name recognition. The hooks flow seemingly without end with lick after lick, transporting me back to the first time I heard the likes of Alive or Just Breathing, An Ocean Between Us, The Oncoming Storm, and Messengers. Expect a few killer solos too on the absolute barn burner Holy Coward, but as standout as the guitar work is, really every member of this band works together as a perfect unit. One only further emphasized by the excellent production job. If you found yourself tired of the waves of gent bands and are looking for the old comforts of At The Gates core, do yourself a favor and give the fire itself a listen. And of course, Last but not least, easily the best album of the entire month and possibly the year, Between the Buried and Me with Colors 2 via Sumerian Records. Watch the tears and fires, distrust in what we've done. Between the Buried and Me is of course a legendary band to fans across genres from metalcore and mathcore to progressive metal. Even after nearly two decades of following the band since I picked up the Silent Circus at that old record store in the Chicago suburbs, I don't think I've ever had a reaction to any of them quite like this before. It taps into the same feelings I remember having way back when, only to further drive home how much they've also come from a completely different vantage point. This band and I, we've grown together and we've seen some shit along the way. Over and over, day in, day out. 
I am absolutely floored. Like, from the very beginning, I was sucked in, which is honestly more than I can say about their last few albums. And with each listen, I only pick up on new details that make me enjoy it even more. This is easily one of Between the Buried and Me's best albums in an already strong discography, and seemingly the culmination of everything that has come before. Honestly, what I have to say about it can't be captured in a short summary, so be sure to check out my full album review for a track-for-track -track analysis, and also once more my new and improved discography tier list. Y'all let me know down in the comments what were your favorite metal albums of August, and don't go anywhere because I got plenty more videos for you to check out, maybe some of these might interest you. You can also join our Discord and support me on Patreon, but that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off, I will see you in the trenches.